I want to say it was pushing like eight or nine thousand. So. Have, have you noticed like getting a lot of text messages, emails, phone calls? Uh, yeah, my, I mean, my friends have all hit me up. You know, my college teammates. So uh, the people that you know I wanted to hear from, I heard from. So I'm good. What, what was their feedback? Uh, most people are just proud of me, you know, but um, uh, the main thing was just keep working. You know, the beautiful thing about this league is you have another game in a day or two days, so you can enjoy it till midnight and you got to get ready for the next one. What kind of recognition do you have from your teammates? Like when the game was over, you guys got back into the locker room. Was there acknowledgement of, of the night that you had? Uh, yeah, you know, guys were excited for me. You know, I, I mean, obviously I was excited for my teammates as well. You know, I feel like we all played well. So um, it, it was a good feeling in the locker room, and we just want to build on that. You seemed pretty humble last night. You know, Nicky always make a lot of noise in the corner and kind of overshadowing the little. That's bombing your interview. <laughs> but, but you seem, you seem very humble. You kept saying, you know, it's just one game. And, you know, I care about this. What, what do you do to, to say, hey, it really was just one game? Um, well, I learned this last year. You know, um, I wasn't playing a lot as a rookie, and um, I, I think the first game I got significant minutes in was at Min uh, Memphis. I played really well and we won. You know, I was excited about it. even the next day. Like I was still thinking about it, and uh, you know, we played New Orleans the next game and we got beat by 20. And those quick turnarounds, uh, the beautiful thing, you know, players like uh, LeBron, Kobe, the guys that are great, is they bring it every single night. So you just can't be excited about one game. You have to uh, be consistent. Did you Kobe second uh, Nothing. <laughs> there you go. Do you think the circumstances have also played into your mindset with just obviously coming to the league as a first round draft pick and things just not working out at this point? Did that force you to kind of feel humbled and not take anything for granted as well? Uh, no, because I, you know, I still feel like I'm, I'm fortunate that I get to play basketball for a living. You know, when I was in high school and I went to Chris Paul camp, that's one thing that he stressed to us is that uh, he's humbled by the fact that every day he gets to wake up and do something that he would do for free. And uh, that really hit home for me in high school, and I've kind of, you know, stuck to that since then. Kendall. Oh, uh, well, how do you, do you use any of that, though, as motivation, just moving forward? Just I mean, kind of your initial adversity. I, I use anything as motivation, yeah. to be honest with you. You know, my, my mom sends me shooting clips trying to tell me I need to work on stuff. I use that as motivation. You know, my sister tells me she scored more points in her game than me. I'll use that as motivation. So I, I'll use anything. Kendall, what was the key to the uh, improved offensive rhythm last night? Uh, we got out and ran, and uh, I think when we got out and ran, uh, it, it was harder for them to offensive rebound because they were so worried about us getting down court. And uh, I think when we're moving at a faster pace where we can compete with anybody. Why were you so effective last night? Uh, well, it's the offense. You know, I give all thanks to that to my coaches and teammates for making me comfortable, uh, you know, giving me the reins and telling me to just go out there and play basketball. What accounted for that strong start in the first quarter? You held Utah to 12 points in the first 12 minutes. Uh, it was getting out and running, you know, and also I think they started out, uh, I think it was three for 14 from the field. So uh, when you're doing that and you're getting out in transition, getting easy looks, it's kind of deflating to the other team. You play the hardest position on the floor, the point guard, which is a coach on the floor. Take me through your mind right now offensively. What are you thinking when you're out there leading the other four guys? Uh, I'm just trying to figure out the easiest ways for us to score. You know, uh, where we have mismatches, uh, what are our strengths. Uh, you know, with Utah, they're going to sit back a lot on pick and rolls. So uh, trying to dissect that. Um, <laughs> You know, next game, now we got to worry about Denver and what they do defensively. You mentioned the pick and roll and dissecting it. Take me through step by step when you come off that pick and roll. What's your decision making process and what are you looking for? Uh, you know, it's hard to take a step by step. There's, you know, 30, 40 things out there that can happen on every single play. So um, the main thing is just reading the defense, seeing how they're reacting, uh, seeing uh, who they're closing out on, things like that. And outside of that, it's just basketball. You've got. You've got, Den you've got Denver coming in, an elite, speedy point guard in Ty Lawson. How do you slow him down or corral him? Um, well, it, it starts with the team, you know, obviously with myself, but uh, we have to do a great job as a team. You know, it, I don't know if there's anybody in the league that can guard him one on one, and uh, I'm excited about the challenge. You feel like the game has slowed down a little bit from the um, I wouldn't say it's slowed down. It's just that I, I'm starting to get the hang of it and understand what it takes to be an NBA point guard. Hey, Kendall, you're saying that your mom and your sister often critique the play. What feedback did they give you about yesterday's game? Uh, the only text I got back from my mom was uh, she sent me a video clip and told me to stop cursing because they, they <laughs> called me on the ben bench saying some things. So uh, I guess I got to watch my mouth now. Gasol had, Gasol had one of his better games of late with you out there. What effect did you have on Pyle's game? 
Uh, no, that's all him. You know, I think we did a great job as a team of giving him the ball. You know, Powell's a great player. We got to continue to feed the monster when we see, the hot, see he's hot. What's your mom's name? Excuse me? What's your mom's name? Kim. Kim Marshall. Does she have a basketball background? Uh, no, not at all. I think she was like a cheerleader. And all of a sudden, you know, I get to high school and she's become a, a basketball analyst. And, uh, <laughs> well, you know, you know, she can still analyze swearing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I'm always getting texts and calls from both my parents. But my mom is the, the weird one because she's never played basketball or anything, you know, yeah. telling me what I need to do. So Your sister played that? Um, actually, my sisters play lacrosse and volleyball. They play basketball for fun. So oh, cool. in a rec league game, if they score 12 points, they make sure I know about it. <laughs> How much of this system have you digested in your short stay here? Uh, I, th I think I've got a lot of it. You know, um, it, it's not overly complicated. Uh, Coach has done a great job of dumbing it down for me and our teammates. Uh, just the main thing is just being unselfish, making the extra pass, and taking an open shot. Kendall, did you happen to hear from Danny Green? Uh, I haven't. I haven't heard from Danny yet. You mentioned that his path was kind of one that you had hoped to, to make. I mean, I haven't heard from him in the past 24 yeah, hours. So oh, yeah. Answer. Yeah, you know, in the past couple months. I've heard from Danny Green. I've heard from Marvin Williams, Coach Williams. Uh, the Carolina family has been great to me from that aspect, and they always point to Danny as a guy that, you know, he had roadblocks but still found a way uh, to get back in the league and be successful. Did you say anything to you Oh, yeah. Marv, uh, he told me after the game he was extremely proud of me. Uh, he hated it had to be against them, but, um, you know, he's happy for me. Uh, saw him again, then he texted me again after the game just to tell me how proud he was on me. And, uh, Marv is like a big brother to me. You know, part of it is the Carolina family, but even when I first got there, he embraced me, and uh, I really look up to him. As a player at Carolina, how uh, well do you know Mitch Kupchak? Is he around the program? Or uh, no, I, I didn't really get to meet him until I got out here. Kendall, a lot of guys that struggle on other teams in this league come to Mike D'Antoni and they flourish. What do you think accounts for that? Uh, well, he's a player's coach, and like I said, he makes the offense uh, very simple. You know, there's nothing complicated about what we're trying to do. Uh, it's just a matter of buying in and uh, finding a way to be successful as a team. You were talking about yesterday fitting into the team finally and kind of getting a little comfortable. Was Nick Young blowing up your interview? Did that, did that help in that process at all? Oh, man, you got to take Nick Young with a grain of salt, you know. Uh, he, he's going to do that every day. He, he's a joy to be around. You know, he's never in a bad mood. Uh, he's great for our team. So. Uh, when he gets on his little little rants, you just got to smile and let him go.